Hey, hello, and welcome to another episode of Ken Training, where we want to train you to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's project is going to be installing a condensate water pump on a mini split air conditioning unit, and we want it to have the safety cutoff, meaning that if the pump on the condensate water pump fails for any reason, it's going to kill the power to the mini split. Now, these condensate pumps, when they build these pumps, they build them for 24 volt on the safety circuit. Now, this particular mini split right here, I'll show you the data nameplate. This is a 230 volt mini split. And if you're familiar with mini splits, and especially with this uh, 230 volt, even if it was a 110 volt on the evaporator, you would have your incoming hot and neutral, in my case it's 120 volts per leg, then you have the communication circuit on the third leg. And then the third leg on these mini splits, they range from a voltage from 40 volts up to about 100 volts. And they, and they vary, and that's the communication between the evaporator and the condenser located somewhere else. So you can't use the safety circuit off of the condensate water pump directly, and so I had to create my own safety circuit right here, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it, all the components for everything that I built will be in the description in case you want to build the exact same setup. There's a large benefit to this and that is is that it's going to shut off the evaporator in the event that this pump fails and then you don't have any water overflow situation. That is the benefit of installing it this way as opposed to just simply installing the condensate water pump with no safety circuit cutoff. Now I've taken it one step further where I have the uh, Govi water leak detector and so that if anything malfunctions here and water goes on the floor underneath this air conditioning unit the water leak sensor which I'll show you right now is going to activate and ring and ping me on my cell phone telling me there's there's some water here you need to go and investigate it. So I'm going to give you the best video possible with as much content as possible in the shortest time frame that I can do for you. I only ask for you to do one thing for me and that is to smash that like button down for me right now. And with that, let's go on with the show. This here is the uh, GoV water leak detector and you see it's got two prongs on the uh, top there and underneath it has prongs too so that if any water goes on this sensor either on the top of the sensor or on the floor and it migrates over to it on the bottom it's going to send an audible alarm. This is a speaker right there. It's going to send an audible alarm here in the room and it's going to ping my phone. So the evaporator that we're dealing with right here is a Fujitsu and you can see on the data nameplate that the voltage is 208, 230 volts single phase and it's pulling not even one amp. I currently have the breaker off but let me explain to you what's happening here. So when you're looking at your, your lines here and you have one, two and three this is L1, L2, so that would be your hot 230 volts across those terminals. And then over here on line 3, that's the communication wire that varies in voltage from 40 to 100 volts. Now the incoming two circuit power that's coming from the breaker is on this black line right here that I'm touching that's landed currently on L2. And also this red line which was landed on L1 but I pulled it off and now it's being transfer transferred to this brown wire that you see right here. That brown wire is in this fat conductor right here and I'll show you that in my box right here. Now mind you I got the breaker off right now so I can show you all this. 
but I got I got a few different wi uh, wires here. You got the pump motor wire, which is also this, and here's the pump that we are dealing with. So we're dealing with a 230 volt pump, okay? And also it's pulling approximately one amp. You can see the data nameplate right there for the voltage and for the amperage. All right, so I got my field piece connected over here to the, to the uh, safety circuit, the safety cutoff circuit. And I got the meter off, but I'm gonna throw it on continuity you're gonna hear it buzz off because this switch is currently closed. Now, I'm just gonna, the, mind you, I got the power off right now. I'm gonna lift up on this, and you see if I, if I push it and then lift it all the way, the safety circuit cuts off, opening the circuit. Well, when I connect onto my relay right there, what's gonna happen is, is that I'm gonna put those and land those on the normally open contacts so that way when the circuit um, loses power and it opens, oops, when that opens and loses power, then it's going to open that, those normally open contacts and then it's um, gonna shut the power off over here to the, um, hold on a second, I keep losing this. This float is a little sensitive. When you look at my relay, these two lines here at the bottom is my 24 volt coil. These next two lines up are normally closed, you can see right there, and these next two terminals are normally opened, terminals two and four. And the relay opens because the safety circuit opens because we've reached a high level in the float. It's going to shut that power off going to the, the, um, the mini split evaporator. All right, so now I have everything wired in the way that it should be. And I'm going to show you a nice um, schematic diagram. But here's the actual wiring diagram, and I'll try to have the schematic match the exact same colors that you're seeing here on the actual um, components. So on your secondary, your 24 volts for your transformer, the green wire is coming and landing on one side of the 24 volt coil. Then we come out of there with a yellow wire and then that comes over and it goes to one side of the safety circuit on our condensate pump. On the other side of the safety circuit, it comes up and it lands on the other side of the 24 volts for the transformer. So there's your 24 volts and here's your interruption right here when we have it when you reach that, um, that high level because the pump's not working. Now for the incoming power, if you remember I told you it comes in on this brown circuit right here and that's one side of the circuit and then, the, and then it comes through here. This is the leg that we're interrupting and then it comes over and goes to one side of the relay on the normally open contacts. On the other side, the brown wire comes in and then that transfers to these two wires right here. These two wires right here are the wires that are right here landed on terminal one, giving you that, uh, that, two, that 120 volts to make up your 208 volt in this commercial office building to make up that, that voltage needed for the evaporator. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn on the breaker and then just show you everything and then pop this up and then show you how it uh, shuts the uh, power off to the unit. All right, I got the breaker on. There's an LED light right there telling you that I got the power on to the evaporator. And I'm gonna, and I put on my field piece leads on lines one and two. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the meter on voltage, AC, right there and you'll see that we have 207 volts okay now I'm going to lift up on the condensate pump and I'm going to put this into an alarm right now you can see that the power is on indicating that that's got 230 volts there's no alarm and the pump is not running I'm going to lift this up to activate the float 
I only got one hand, so I'm going to try to do the best I can here. This is a little tricky. Okay, I got to lift it up. I'm going to activate the float. Okay, the pump is trying to run, even though the water level doesn't need it. It, it doesn't have a, an audible alarm, it's just a silent alarm. Your voltage on the meter has now dropped down to 4 volts, meaning in that the LED here has also shut off. So the power has been killed to this unit using this safety circuit right here. Now I'm going to release the float with my, my hand, let that come back down. Pump shuts off, the alarm went away and the voltage has now been restored back to the unit. It thinks that it had a power failure. Now it's going to go through a startup sequence and it's just going to start again, but the power is back on. That is going to conclude this video. I hope you got some valuable information out of this video. If you have, please go ahead and smash that like button down for me. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, and I will catch you on the flip side. Thank <laughs> you.